This case study shows how wildlife conservation can be an entry point to addressing landscape challenges. Can peanut butter stop a bullet? Perhaps it can. We begin our story in eastern Zambia, where there has long been conflict between conservation of wildlife and natural resources, agriculture and food production, and human livelihood and even survival. Castro Jerry and Isaac Chibanga live near the South Longwa National Park, located in eastern Zambia. They have something in common. They have both been to prison, more than once, for poaching wildlife. Yet today, Castro is a skilled carpenter, and he trains his villagers, some of them also ex-poachers, with new skills of woodwork. Isaac has become a lead farmer in conservation agriculture. What changed their lives? Hundreds of miles away from their village, in a series of supermarket chains in Zambia's capital and several other cities, consumers are enjoying these new Zambian-made natural products. Ranging from soy cereals, rice to honey and peanut butter, these products all carry an elephant icon with the label, It's Wild. What many consumers are yet unaware of is that these healthy goods come from the fields of some 130,000 smallholder farmers who, like Isaac and Castro, live in the Luangwa Valley. With an organization named Comaco, these farmers are transforming degraded soils into healthy, productive ones and earning a sustainable livelihood while at the same time conserving the forest, wildlife, and national parks. So who is Comaco? Comaco is a non-profit organization that operates in the Luangwa Valley. Its goal is to achieve sustainable wildlife and forest conservation. It does so by supporting communities in managing agricultural and forest lands and by bringing farm produce to market. How has Comaco been changing the lives of thousands of farmers who live below poverty lines? In the remote Luangwa Valley in eastern Zambia, there are numerous national parks, as shown in dark grey. The largest is the South Luangwa National Park, one of the most spectacular game parks in Africa. It brings to the country the largest revenue from tourism. The dark green areas are forest reserves. The light yellow represents game management areas. The remaining light green areas surrounding the parks are homes to thousands of smallholder farmers and where Comaco operates. The valley is home to abundant biodiversity. Wildlife thrives. Birds, elephants, giraffe, hippos, leopards, lions, and many more indigenous species. Poaching of wildlife has been a tradition for generations, and in the last decades it has been increasing drastically as human population pressure grows. The official response has been law enforcement. Some poachers were captured, fines were administered, and jail sentences imposed. But as soon as they were set free, many resumed their illegal hunting. Alongside poaching, trees are felled illegally and deforestation has cut deep into the forests. Once again, fines and punishment have been the main response. But Zambia still has the second highest deforestation rate in Africa. It's clear that policing alone to control poaching and illegal deforestation has not been effective. Why? To answer this question, we need to look into the cause. Why do people poach and cut trees illegally? Poaching is, nine times out of ten, to feed hungry families when food runs low, especially during dry months. Poaching is a way to bring home meat or cash. Years of neglect in taking care of the land has caused soil erosion and nutrient depletion, 
which led to poor harvests. Lack of knowledge in sustainable agriculture results in the continuous opening up of fertile forest land for crop cultivation. Making of charcoal from felled trees for cooking is another culprit. The Comacos model emerged over the past 10 years focuses on addressing these root causes. Comaco gives farmers access to improved farming knowledge through better extension and advisory services and access to markets. A two-pronged approach with both immediate and long-term benefits, addressing food insecurity and land degradation together. Their rationale is simple. If farmers can produce enough food and have surplus crops to sell, they will no longer need to poach wildlife which is risky and dangerous and they will have less need to open up new land through deforestation. Comaco operates through an incentive system that respects both human livelihood and natural resources. It offers the following services to its members. First, it supports communities through organization farmer producer groups and chiefdom based cooperatives. Second, it provides agricultural extension to farmer groups in practicing sustainable land management, such as no till cultivation, mulching instead of crop residue burning, manure and ground cover management, rotation between legume and cereal crops, avoidance of chemicals and incorporation of agroforestry. Third, Comaco trains alternative livelihood skills such as carpentry, poultry raising, and beekeeping. It has started a community radio program to raise awareness of conservation and to provide information on weather, markets, and farming technologies. Fourth, Comaco guarantees produce purchasing from members. It offers premium prices for their produce, which it processes and links to a niche market through the branding It's Wild. Note that Comaco offers neither cash nor materials, with the exception of improved crop seeds and seedlings of agroforestry species. In exchange, communities need to comply with a pledge signed between Comaco and farmer producer groups. Pledge to stop poaching and voluntarily surrender guns and wire snares. Apply practices of sustainable management of agricultural and forest lands as mentioned earlier. Implement communities' own forest conservation plans to protect the buffer zone and to stop encroaching into forest areas and national parks. After 10 years of effort, the impact has been remarkable. Average maize yields almost doubled, and yield of groundnut increased by a third. Household income more than doubled. As a result, Food security of Comaco farmers increased from 34% in 2005 to 74% in 2015. 1,600 former poachers were transformed. Some became skilled farmers, carpenters, poultry keepers, or beekeepers. Some repicked up their guns, firing at elephants and hippos, except this time, they used chili powder in their guns only to scare off animals from destroying crop fields. Over 2,000 firearms were voluntarily surrendered. Over the years, Comaco has improved its strategies in reducing fires from residue burning and forest clearance, and communities have adopted the strategies over time. This study shows fire intensity in early years and in more recent years. It includes the area of 17 chiefdoms out of the 64 chiefdoms covered by Comaco. The lighter the color, the less fire intensity, a clear improvement in recent years. The same study also shows the change in vegetation cover. One can observe the increasing vegetation in recent years as represented by the pink. 
but there also seems to be persistent vegetation losses as shown in dark blue. This map shows two adjacent chiefdoms, Chikomeni in the upper location, which was a Komako covered area, and Chinunda in the lower location, which was not yet a Komako area. A study compared the number of fire incidents between the two areas between 2005 and 2011, including both forest fire, bush fire, and crop field residue burning. The red color means more fire incidents than the light yellow. It shows that Nankomako area had more fire incidents. Comparing the vegetation in the same areas for the same period, one can easily observe the increased vegetation in green in the Komako area in Chikomeni. Komako continues to grow in area and in the number of farmers. These maps from 2000, 2005, and 2015 show the spread of Komako membership and chiefdoms. It is clear that local communities are eagerly embracing Komako's business model. The Zambian government has taken note. The country is preparing a new landscape management program that involves multiple agencies, government, NGOs, and communities. The program aims to scale up successful models and approaches nationwide. Komako's model is among them. By 2015, the number of Komako farmers reached 133,000, comparing to 45,000 in 2010, and none 10 years ago.